Welcome back everybody to the Kirby's Epic Yarn playthrough. This is part five and we're going to be continuing on into the beginning of Hotland. I, I guess I shouldn't have said continuing there. I remember we're going to be starting Hotland. Silly me. I forgot what we're doing already. Anyway, so we're going to be starting off with Pyramid Sands. And once again, this is the uh, level where we need that one um, decoration uh, for the last decoration of that apartment that is yet to be decorated. So we're going to head on into Pyramid Sands and hopefully get that. So right off the bat, we're given this uh, quicksand stuff that we were already familiar with in the um, mole hole level. And uh, again, I still think it looks really cool. So, you know, I'm fine with it. It's fairly easy to deal with, too. So that's always nice. Now, that first enemy that I dealt with is called a Swad Clod. And underneath them, um, they have enemies called a Cyclod. But in instances like that, Swad Clods can be hiding a, um, what's it called? Sneak Sack. And by destroying a Sneak Sack, uh, it uh, erupts into a whole bunch of beads. And it's very, very, very useful for getting the metals that we need because they have lots of beads. They're kind of, they remind me of the, um, uh, those, uh, guys in, uh, uh, Super Mario Galaxy, the, uh, they're like the little ninja bag of star bits. This is basically the same thing. Anyway. Um, so I actually went ahead and made sure that I knew what I was doing before I started recording. Uh, in that, I mean, I actually went and checked where I stopped uh, reading the information. So I'm going to read some information, because I haven't done that in a while, since part two, actually. Uh, I actually started off very, very early on in the beginning of the uh, of the article, where we're still in the, uh, the gameplay section here. Now, it says that certain areas feature special transformations which give Kirby unique abilities, such as a giant missile launching tank, a fire twuck, and a steam train which rides across tracks drawn by the Wii Remote's pointer. Kirby's primary method of attack it consists of a Yarn Whip ability, which he can use to grab enemies and other objects, allowing him to wind them up into small balls of yarn and throw them. Kirby can also use his whip to activate mechanisms such as zips and pulleys and swing on buttons. A second player can also join in the game playing as Prince Fluff, who plays identically to Kirby and assisting in controlling transformations. You know, thinking about it now, I think that's the reason why Kirby's um, gameplay mechanics are so, I wouldn't say radically different, but definitely more different than, you know, the standard Kirby formula where, you know, you're inflating and, you know, you're sucking up enemies to get their abilities. Um, I think it was to enable the two-player um, option where, you know, you have this other character now who clearly is not Kirby. Um, it has his own sort of uh, abilities, so why not just make Kirby, you know, nerf Kirby a little bit and give him that new character's abilities? Which I think, if I remember correctly, there was a portion that I read. Ouchies! Oh, That's not very nice. There was a portion I read earlier where it said that originally this game was supposed to be based around Prince Fluff, and I think they turned it into a Kirby game. Kind of like what they did with the Star Fox Adventures. Um, so yeah, they kind of, you know, they just put Kirby into there and was like, you know what, let's give Kirby this guy's abilities that we were going to give him, uh, and then make it a two-player co-op thing. Which, honestly, the two-player co-op thing seems fun, but I don't have a 2P to play with. So, oh my god! Oh, that was spooky. Um, again, ow. What are these guys called? I think they were called Rolling Claws. Yeah, I think that's it. Spiky boys. Um... Um, oh goodness me, what was I saying? Uh, two player. Uh, I don't have a 2P. Uh, and it looked fun. And uh, something or other. There you go. Uh, maybe I'll remember it later on. I, I, I ain't stopping this train. We're, we're continuing on. <laughs> Alright, so now we get to the final section of the level, which will give us a brand new transformation called Off-Roader Kirby. Thank you, me, for kind of doing that little... Up, 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 up. Cool. Maneuver there. So this is actually a pretty fun transformation. Uh, this is just, you know, your standard side-scrolling racing 
uh, mechanic, kind of like, you know, any other side-scrolling racing game that has ever existed in the history of forever. The first one that comes to my mind is Excite Bike, because I'm very old. Um, and you want to aim for these, yeah, these little turbo boost thingies, um, where you kind of want to... You also want to avoid the cactuses, because I can't remember if I already showed this or not, but yes, you will get hit and lose a bunch of beads, and you can't stop as off-road or curvy, which is a little unfortunate. Following that section isn't too hard, you just kind of follow the beads uh, straight up to this fabric disc. Yes, I'm still calling it that. And I think I missed it, but um, <clears throat> I did get that uh, that decoration, the decorative ob object. Um, and then at the end of here, we get our first place prize, which is a whole bunch of beads. And then I get to show off what a, what a uh, friendly sport I am by destroying second and third place. <laughs> Take that, you losers! <laughs> Anywho, I didn't get the third, uh, the three-star um, bonus thing, but apparently it didn't matter because I didn't even get close to it. So there you go, we are done! And we get the Magic Lamp Patch, and we end off with 2,285 beads before bonuses, of course. Which should bump us up to... No, never mind. Oh, well, a total of 17,220. There you go. And there's the patch, as I mentioned. I wasn't lying about that. I, I promise. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, gosh, what was it? It was... It was... <clears throat> the two-player The two-player stuff, I said, looked fun. Um, I think there, there has been at least one uh, level that I will be showing shortly um, that doesn't require two-player um, to, uh, play, but it does make things a lot simpler if you do have two-player play. <clears throat> uh, so we got um, a couple of messages. I, oh, that's right. Um, the I forget his name. Um, the guy, Quilty Square, wants to talk to us about his brothers, which I still hadn't done. And uh, Zeke has a new hide-and-seek for us. <clears throat> so we're going to go ahead and do that. And talk to this guy about his brothers. And I can't, what is this guy's name again? What's happening? I can't talk to him. Oh, there we go. So this is his brothers. Uh, what were the name, names again? Right, so they said Chase Wool and Loomis Wool. Okay. So these guys are the shop in the game, which they, you know, they don't sell anything important, but they do sell decorative objects. Um, just in case, you know, you want to decorate and you know, fancy up your place, you can do that here with uh, Loomis and uh, Chase. The sushi for twenty. I love how they have the little Bronto Bert, and he's very, very expensive. <laughs> Definitely, I'm feeling like he's my favorite enemy in the game so far. You know, he. Bronto Birds haven't been too much of a cane yet, but um, maybe they will later on. I, I just think they're adorable. Alright, so we're going to hop into apartment 201, uh, and we're going to yeah decorate, like I said. Uh, we got that last portion. I forgot what it was called, like the dino. Uh, maybe if I look this up here. Uh, beady, beady, beady. Camel sofa, that's it. <laughs> this is the camel sofa. <laughs> I don't know why I just find that so hilarious to just watch the uh, the the cursor just like freak out on each side of the screen and then like slowly move towards the middle. Like, okay, there we go, we got it. <laughs> hey, here's our new um apartment mate, Beedrix, Beedrix, uh, and just like Zeke, she has her own sort of little mini games, which I believe I can start a number of them so far. Uh, these are called Beedrix's Run, and the objective is to collect a certain number of beads in the time frame. Um, I believe I can do the first three. Here we go. Made sure I had the information ready to go, you know, because that's important. And just like with uh, Zeke's mini games, um, it takes us back to stages that we've already done before. <clears throat> and we just kind of, you know, this time we're floating around as uh, UFO or Saucer Kirby. And, um,. Like I said, just kind of trying to farm some beady beaties. If I can find them. Oh, that's that's the end there. I will say, though, 
without spoiling much, that Beedrix's challenges are definitely quite a bit tougher than Zeke's. Uh, oh, okay. I don't know why that always surprises me. <laughs> I, just, I just don't expect it. I just, I'm just kind of using it and, you know, boom, there you go. Collected 600 beads. Good old, good old Zippy Zap attack. But th this is also very good for collecting, um, obviously for collecting beads, but uh, for farming beads as well, you know, just kind of give you a, you know, a, a quick, a quick jump in your total bead count. And just like with Zeke, she also gives fabrics when you finish her uh, challenges. Uh, now what I'm going to be doing in this particular uh, video, <laughs> that's the word, video, is uh, as you can see here, I'm just going to cut out the loading screens uh, between the curtain closing. Um, not necessarily because I like messed up and had to restart, um, which for this particular uh, thing, yes I did. I, I messed up once. Um, because I didn't realize that there's an enemy in this stage that you actually have to defeat, and yeah, it's this guy, Swad Clod, who is secretly a, uh, um, what's, what's the name of the enemy again? <laughs> Sneak Sack. <laughs> and yeah, just like that, boom, done. Easy peasy. Um, I, I think that's what I was going to say in the, in the first stage, was that transparency, um, I actually restarted that stage one time, so I believe that was my second attempt that you were witnessing. Yeah, I... Oh, that actually looks kind of nice. I actually kind of like that one. Okay, so we're gonna save up and go to the third and last one that we can do currently, which is in the Big Bean Vine. I still love this music so much. Um... I do love, though, how Beedrix just kind of hangs out with you the whole time. She's, <laughs> she's like acting like the referee. She's like, all right, I gotta make sure that I see that you're collecting this many beads. You know, I can't just like, I can't just like leave at the start and, you know, just kind of stand there and wait for you to come back and be like, yeah, I collected this many. Hey, no sleeping on the job. Again, this guy, she's still sleeping. Ever since the last time I was here. Good golly. That is not acceptable. Oh, okay. <laughs> he just kind of stands there like, all right, well, I'm done. <laughs> I give up. All right, easy peasy. -da 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 -da. Yay. Okay, so that's going to be it for now for uh, the Beedrix's challenges that we have unlocked. Um, now we're going to go and move on to the Zeke's, Hide and Seek's, that uh, we had been alerted to beforehand. By beforehand, I mean after the Pyramid Sands level. And I think that's actually the only one that we can do, is just the Pyramid Sands, because I I don't think there was anything else that I unlocked. I guess we'll find out. Yeah, so here we go, back to Zeke's, Zeke's pad. And let's see, what do you got for us? Yeah, just Pyramid Sands. Alright, cool. Alright, so while we're going to be searching for Zeke and his sneaky pals, uh, I'll read a little bit more of that information just to kind of get, you know, a bigger chunk of it out of the way. Um, <clears throat> stages are filled with several collectible items, primarily assorted craft beads, which Kirby can collect. Or primarily assorted craft beads, which Kirby can collect. Sorry, I kind of inflected that wrong. Completing levels earns Kirby 104 different ranking medals, wood, bronze, silver, or gold, depending on how many beads the player completed the level with. Kirby does not have health or extra lives and cannot die in levels, but he will lose some of his beads upon receiving damage or falling into bottomless pits. Uh, by the way, I just wanted to mention really quickly that I am familiar with that at this point. And let me tell you, whoever worded this as some, as Kirby will lose some of his beads, is really, really underselling it, because you lose a lot of beads. <laughs> Like a, you know, I have to restart the level kind of amount of beads. Um, beads can also be used to purchase furniture and wallpaper for Kirby's apartment, which we just saw, which the player can customize to their liking. Additional furniture, as well as music tracks, can be unlocked by finding treasure chests hidden in each level. By decorating other apartments with the right furniture, new tenants will move in, opening up bonus challenges, such as time trials. Um... I got one sneaky boy left. God, a minute, 
a minute and 30 left. Oh, hmm. Gee, I wonder where he is. <laughs> that was very easy. Good God. I mean, like, especially compared to, you know, like I said, the Beedrix thing. Like, Beedrix really makes you, like, she makes you snap it up, like, really quick. Zeke gives you just, like, a ton of time to find him and his buds. Which, again, I think it's five different Zeke's as opposed to just one. And then... Like cloned four times. <laughs> all right, so I believe that's it for all of the mini game stuff that we have now. We're gonna go back into Hotland. Oh, okay, <laughs> that was a very fancy transition there. Gotta love some uh, magic of video editing. So we're gonna hop into the lava landing. Now, unsurprisingly, this is also gonna um, give us a brand new transformation. Um, but we'll get to that when we get to that. Now, the Bronto birds here are a little bit of a pain in the necky neck. Oh, my goodness. Uh, where they kind of try to drop these little bombs on you. But the bombs are incredibly useful. So, again, it, it's... They're really, really making me think that the Bronto birds are not actually that bad. <laughs> Still, to this point, anyway. I do love the background for this. This is really, really nice. It's sort of like a pinky sort of uh, sky and like maybe I guess like some smoke but it's pink so they got like a pink smoke going on there also the explosions of the bombs aren't really that big now these guys are called scrolling down hang on give me a sec bombers uh, now with bombers you can roll them up into bombs as opposed to you know rolling them up into your standard like you know yarn uh, uh, projectile uh, the bombs as you can see have a curve or have an arc to them when you throw them and so kind of trying to figure out the the correct area to stand in when you throw them there we go is key boom boom i do kind of like that they have different types of throwing oh goodness throwing uh objects where these bombs are not particularly my favorite but they are kind of cool. It's different. So there we got the three-star bonus. Kinda start things off for us in terms of treasures. Um, now, for whatever reason, these volcanoes, first of all, can be turned off by pulling their little string there. Uh, and second of all, they, if you, yeah, if you have beads that flow in from the lava into the volcanoes, um, for whatever reason, they just kind of bounce around at the uh, the top of the volcano, and when you shut them off, you can collect those beats, which is a pretty simple mechanic, but kind of... I, I found it kind of obnoxious, to be honest. And I think this is... Yeah, this was part of the reason why, because I... I didn't want to sit there and wait the whole time for, you know, those to pop up, and, and now it's too late. Now I can't actually grab it, so yeah, those are gone. Uh, these guys, I don't know what their deal is, but uh, you just kind of jump on their heads or something. I, I can't even remember. Did I jump on their heads? It hasn't been as long as, you know, like the gap between, like, you know, the first, second, and third parts of this playthrough, but it's it's been, like, a little bit, so, okay. It doesn't look like they do anything. They're just kind of, they're just kind of platforms. Okay, and with that, oops, that little sneaky exclamation, exclamation mark, we get a stone lamp. And, you know, another thingy for our furniture. I still haven't touched the apartment, which is... I really should do that sometime soon. I'm just kind of... Well, maybe, actually, you know, maybe I'll wait. <laughs> I mean, I've waited this long. Oh, goodness. Ow. No, I guess that's one way to do it. <laughs> you know, Super Mario Bros. 2 it. You know, I'm just going to grab the, uh... Grog need fire. I don't... Is Grog supposed to be, like, a generic caveman name or something? I'm not... I don't really understand that. Um, anyway. Uh, where, oh, the uh, apartment. I think I'm going to wait until I get more decorations. Because, like I said, I waited this long. I can wait lo I can wait longer. Anyway, here's this stage's new transformation. This is the fire engine. Fire engine, Kirby. Um, this is, yeah, th it's, this was a little weird for me to kind of figure out. You kind of have to tilt the, uh, the Wii remote. Kind of like... Um, if you're playing uh, New Super Mario Bros. Wii, 
you uh, you have to kind of you know, with the the tilting platforms, you just kind of have to you know wiggle the uh, the Wii remote left and right. It it's not. It's not hard to figure out, but you know, it just because I'd never done it before in this game, it was a little weird for me to just kind of, oh, what am I doing here? Take the, uh, the Wii remote and kind of use it as a steering wheel, you know, like I was uh, an old, you know, like like I was somebody's parents playing a, a video game. And I say that because my mom legitimately did that before. Like I, I remember trying to get her to play Mario Kart, which I thought. Wow, you know, my mom's such a good driver. Um, I'm sure that she'd be really, really good at Mario Kart, and I'm sure she'd enjoy playing it. <laughs> Watching her play it <laughs> and turning the controller <laughs> while she's pressing the buttons. Oh, good times. Good old, uh, good good memories. All right, so yeah, that's that's it. That's the entirety of the level, I think. Don't, don't turn me into a liar here. Oh, well, he did turn me into a liar. Unbelievable. This game. This game. So, this part of the level is reminiscent of the, the end of Chapter 6 in Paper Mario, where you're... Or Chapter 5, I'm sorry. Chapter 5, where you're kind of escaping the uh, soon-to-be erupting volcano, and, you know, it's kind of on your heels. <laughs> um, this is really not that difficult. <laughs> this is actually quite easy to outrun the lava as it's rising. Uh, and, you know, you can actually just, you know, take it slow and take your time and just grab all these beads. And, oops, hey, you watch it now. Don't you be jumping on me, mister. Just gonna take that, smash them into that guy, and collect those beads. And those beads, too. Uh, now, I forget. if Do I have another uh, thing that I haven't collected yet? Or... Um, Yada, yada, yada. Uh, final segment, yeah, with the rising lava. This is where the fabric CD is. Okay. Again, this is really, really simple. Um, it's more of kind of more of you know teaching you to you know not freak out, get it, getting you you know a little bit more acclimated to the mechanics. There it is. There's a fabric CD. Now, very quickly, we have to run over here. Knock this guy out if I can. Maybe I shouldn't have winded that guy up, but whatever. Uh, and then we get the five star speed bonus thingy. Pulling us back up. Up again. Now, this is the final segment here. This is actually really weird because, the, yeah, the lava really, really shoots up super fast when you hit this part. And uh, that's the end right there. Oh, did I? Oh, okay. I got a little excited there. I thought maybe I hit the five. I did not hit the five. I hit the three. That's okay. Bonus speeds are bonus speeds, right? All right. So twenty-four ninety-six in total, and we got the uh, the boxing bell patch. Oh, this this is an interesting little animation. <laughs> to give us a grand total so far of twenty-one thousand three hundred twenty-nine beads. Twenty-one thousand six hundred twenty-nine beads. I do love collecting stuff. It is so much fun. That, that's part of the reason why I, this game has really appealed to me thus far. I, I, I'm just, ugh, just collecting stuff is just my favorite. Now, getting hit and losing stuff is not my favorite. <laughs> that was something. Alright, it was like a little, like, it was like the genie of the lamp from the, the previous animation, but now he came back down, I guess, and punched the rug? Anyway, who knows. Alright, so while I'm dancing, I'm going to go ahead and say this is going to be the end for this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and follow me on YouTube. Uh, I really appreciate it if you do that. And thank you so much once again to my generous monthly supporters. See you all next time.